some magic about him, this youngster. Kane Corns. Yeah, I'll just put him time. Young Kane Corns is so clean. He's come out there in the heat of the battle, and three times he's taken the football cleanly. Something, dare I say, special about that young fella. Oh, oh. Number 18, Kane Corns. Corns, it's a famous name in footy. First there was Graham, then there was Chad, and then there was Kane. And he's been more than able since his debut in 2001. And he finally joins us on the couch after many years of trying to get you over. Welcome to you, Kane. No, thanks, Jerry. Thanks, boys. It's been an exciting year uh, for all of you, an exciting couple of years, in fact. But uh, just at the moment, the portrait's starting to crumble a little bit. Yeah, the last two weeks, probably the last month, hasn't been uh, where we would like it. But um, look, it's been a great year by the players. We, um, we've lost three games by under a kick, so it would have been great to get you know, two or three of those or maybe even one. And, but, I mean, you would have taken third on the ladder at this stage of the year, but we've got some work to do to get things back on track. Just talking about that last month where you've lost three or four, what do you see as the catalyst or what areas have dropped off? Probably just the, the little things, Jason. A, a goal kicking um, has been probably let us down and probably cost us a couple of games. Um, we probably haven't bought the frenetic intensity that we've bought probably at the start of the year, which we need to get back to. There's your goal kick there, mate. You've gone from second in the comp mm. over the first 12 rounds to mm. 18th over the last yeah, five It's surprising. We, we do a lot of work on it uh, right from when pre-season started. Yep. You know, we realise that this can cost you games and you know we've been talking about goal kicking in footy for you know, as long as I can yeah. remember. So something we need to address and, and get right. Kane, you mentioned frenetic pace. Is it possible to play at the level that you guys play at for 22 home and away games, particularly when you do get some injuries to key players. Mm. Yeah, it is. I think we're genetically we're a, a fantastic running group. Okay. Um, our midfield is really strong in that area, um, and our numbers would suggest that you know, that hasn't really dropped dropped away. But uh, certainly, teams have, have come to hunt us and, and get after us and really pressure us. We probably haven't coped with that um, to the best of our ability as we did in the first half of the year. But uh, something we're aware of, and we need to um, get back to playing that attacking footy that we love. Kane, an amazing record. You're the game's record holder at 283, mm. four best and fairest. Nine years of the past ten, you finished top three in the best and fairest. 2011 is the exception. What happened that year? You ended up going back to Glenelg twice. What happened? Yeah, it was a tough year, Mike. Um, um, Matty Primus took over as coach and probably not the first player to um, see different points of view from the coach in, in terms of the way he saw my game, which was fine. Um, but, yeah, it was a challenge for me. I ended up playing reserves at North Adelaide one day. It was probably the, the lowest point <laughs> of my career. But um, in a way, it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. It forced me to go away and, and work on some areas of my game that um, needed addressing. Like? Um, yeah, look, I, I think just the way I was using the ball, where I was getting the footy, um, was going to ground a little bit too much. So um, at the time, you know, you're angry and you try and think of excuses. But when you really knuckle down and look at it, um, there was areas I needed to work on. And I did address that in the off-season that year. I got uh, I got really fit and came back Did you back think in. you were gone, though? Did you? Th I think Matty Primus thought you were finished as an AFL footballer. Did you? Yeah, I, yeah 100%. I um, thought I was gone. And if it wasn't probably for Keith Thomas, who took over as CEO that year, he sat down and had a coffee with Keith, and I told him, you know, I'd had enough. And um, I had two years to go on my contract, so they were pretty reluctant to pay that out. But Keith showed a lot of faith in me um, and said that he was going to give me a fair shot. Um, so I went away and got really fit. And... 2012, I think people forget, under Matty Primus, I won the best and fairest that year and we got along um, professionally really well. So we were able to put that difference behind us and, and get on with it. Mike, can you just emphasise that again? I mean, that just rolled off the tongue, but uh, that would be the best best and fairest record of any well, current it, day player. Well, Corns, this one, Kane and Warren Treadray share the record at Port Adelaide. Only two blokes have won more than one and that's them with four. Mm. And the game's record holder. I mean, I'm not saying but that the top five hit. finishes is an incredible. Well, no, three. Top, no top, top, three. Three. top three. Nine out of ten years mm. in the top three. I mean, I don't, I don't think you get the recognition over here that, that you deserve for that record. Yeah, uh, probably rightly so, Michael. Like, I've never seen myself as a you know a great player. I've, you know, I've always been just a battler, someone who, who does their job. Um, you know, is good at stopping opponents and getting a little bit of the foot himself. But I've never seen myself, you know, as probably that record suggests. And look, I don't tend to look back on what I've done too much, uh, probably will at the end of my career, but always sort of focusing on what's next and the next challenge in front of me. As a battler, you get a hell of a lot of the footy <laughs> when you want to chase it, mate, and I'll tell you what, you do some great shutdown roles too. What's been the balance of your role under Ken Hinckley? Yeah, it's probably been 50-50, Jason. It's, uh, I think Ken understands me really well. Uh, he understands that it is pretty mentally draining playing that shutdown role 
week in and week out and, and credit to the guys that do that in the AFL but it, it is nice to get freed up every now and then and, and work on other areas of your game so Ken understands that and we've got a, a great relationship. What's the potential of this group? You've played in a premiership side, uh, you've got some terrific players around you, some like Robbie Gray who mm. the coaches have in their top five, an amazing uh, draft pick. We looked at that earlier in the program along with Justin Westhoff, you picked him up at 71, he's turned into a match winner himself. Has this group got a premiership within them or do you need to get some backup for key defensive zones and others? It's a hard question to answer, Jared, and I, I'm not sure you get too much out of answering whether you're going to win a flag or not or whether you can see it. It's, I think you've got to focus on you know, just winning as many games as you can to get top four, and mm. from there we know you're, you're a big chance. You're as good a chance as anyone. So for us now, it's just about winning as many games as we can and finishing as high as we can. But we've got some serious talent on our list, and the group is as driven a group as I've ever seen, where... We're led extremely well by, by Travis Boke. He sets an amazing standard. And the young players that are in our side are really driven for success. So, look, I'm really confident the next few years at the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Did you fear that Travis Boke was going to come back to Melbourne a couple of years ago? Yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, Mike, he's, he's, he's a great person from an amazing family. Um, and he's to see the way he's developed his game, not only on the field but off it, uh, the best leader I've played under. Um, and yeah, look, I'm just glad that he stayed. Uh, he didn't. He never really spoke about his contract stuff. He kept it pretty private. But I think he's made the right choice. It's been a massive change, a massive impact from Ken Hinckley at the Port Adelaide Football Club. What makes Ken so great? Uh, the first thing is he's an amazing motivator. Um, every week I go into the team meeting before a game, and I think to myself, "How's he going to get us up this week?" But he finds a way to get us up. You feel like you can. You want to run through a brick wall after he's he's finished talking to you. So that's. For me, that's his number one yep. thing. He, he motivates us like no other coach I've ever had. And secondly, he's just really footy smart. He knows what's going. He, he makes calls on gut instinct from the coach's box that uh, he sees the game very, very well. Can I take you back eight years and the birth of the first of your three kids, Eddie? Mm. He was born with a heart, major heart irregularity. Did that change your life then? Because you were obsessive about football, weren't you? Yeah, I was. It, uh, it probably prolonged my career um, in a way. It, it forced me to focus on what's really important. I was so intense about my footy. Um, you know, if I had a good game and we won, I'd be happy. If, if I had a bad game and or we lost, I'd you know wouldn't talk to anyone for a, a few days. So it was getting it <laughs> getting a bit out of control. There, Chad actually sat me down one time and said, "Mate, you've got to you've got to relax. You've got to chill out." So. Um, the stuff we've had with Eddie has forced me to do that. Um, it's been a, the biggest challenge of my life and, and Lucy, my wife, um, she does an amazing job. She stays pretty strong for the family, but yeah, he's got a battle ahead of him, but uh, he's a so great kid. Explain, he's got, his heart yeah, was so born his on heart the wrong side? Born, he's, he was born with his heart on the right side of his body instead of the left. It's called dextricardia. And he's got a couple of drainage issues um, with that, which is, you know, he's had a couple of operations and probably facing open heart surgery sometime is he? in the future. But Look, he's doing really well. He loves his footy um, mm. and he loves being a part of the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Can I ask you about a controversial uh, incident on the weekend? Angus Monfries was run down from behind and I think it's exposed the flaw in the rules that mm. uh, nobody can really tell you what prior opportunity is. I think the umpires were found out in recent times use six steps as a guide. If that's the case, that's a good decision. But there's been a hue and cry from around the country that it was the wrong decision. What's your understanding of it and what did you think at the time? I'm not too sure. Clearly that one is holding the ball. Uh, I think we need to get back to rewarding the tackler as a what kid. Is, just before yeah. you go on, Kane, did you say clearly holding the ball? Clearly holding the ball. Jared? Well, I don't think it is. I think it's a, a prior opportunity. I think you're entitled in the game to get balanced to kick. And the umpires, if they've been uh, given a, a guideline of six steps, well, that's clearly a good decision based on what the umpires' yeah. guidelines have been. But uh, from speaking to people on the rules committee, they've found out that there is no guideline as to what this means prior but, opportunity. But the player mentality is you would have thought that that's incorrect well, disposal. When, well, when I was taught as a kid, if you get tackled and you drop the ball, yep. Yep. holding exactly. the ball, well, I think we need to get back to rewarding the tackle because it's such a great skill, an underrated skill in our sport and something that you're taught as a kid. So let's reward the tackle, let's play holding the ball and it, it'll clear up the congestion as well for paying more freeze the play will flow quicker, we won't have the, the rolling stuff that we're getting at the moment. Speaking of rules, you guys are pushing the envelope, I think, as far as some set plays. And we saw one last week that was absolutely extraordinary. I don't know if you've seen footage of this. Look at Pittard with the ball under his arm. This is while an opponent's having a shot for goal, not allowed to go to the bag and get the ball, throws it to Broadbent. The ball's still in the air there, <laughs> off and running, and it goes end to end. 
It's very... It's innovative, isn't very it? Very clever <laughs> from Jasper. We actually get stuck into Jasper at times for not being the smartest <laughs> decision maker on the field at times. Uh, we love him, but yeah, very clever. What footy, about... folklore, so, uh, footy folklore has it, Kane, that you were the first person to be uh, taken to the authorities for acting. You remember there was the legislation was in, <laughs> yeah. but you can't act, and if you do, you risk subs suspension. Nothing's happened since, but what happened in your case? Uh, I never, I never got a warning or a letter or anything like that. I, I got a, a message that they were looking into an incident. I think it was with Corey Enright down at Skill Stadium one day. I never got an official warning, but I mean it was enough to, for me to, you know, pull my head in and, and stop doing it. Um, the embarrassment. But the legislation's that. got no teeth, though. Well, yeah, I don't see, I don't think we're seeing as many players do it these days as they were back then. I think it's. Uh, just the odd warning is enough to, you know, even you guys just talking about it is enough for players. Wasn't to, there an incident on the weekend where the umpire told you to get up and stop uh, acting? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually legit. <laughs> <laughs> it was. You got it wrong. Uh, by the way, I was always taught if you got tackled and the ball was knocked out, it was play on. But well, nevertheless, oh, we... Like different game 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 game. Yeah. Uh, big game for you against the Tigers on the weekend. You've lost uh, three out of four, as the whole footy world is talking about. Uh, we're looking forward to you. Uh, coming back to the winners list and seeing how you uh, rebound. Yeah, look, we've had some trouble with Richmond. Uh, it's another really tricky game for us. They've beaten us. I can't remember. I think Ben Cousins' last game was the last time we beat them. So, yeah, time for us to get a win on the board. Uh, we're playing away, so another challenge for us. A big game to get our season back on track. Appreciate you coming over. Good luck. Thanks, Good boys. to see you. Been a pleasure. Kane Corn, special guest on the couch. More to come straight after this. later at the end. Daniel, he was po faced when he said that too. On mic. Yeah. Probably a couple oh, of lines from Look you. out, yeah. but she's tagged in for the draft. <laughs> yeah. For the draft, sorry. So.